Ron Silver was my friend. He was our friend and a true American patriot. He loved and he wanted to protect our country. He was a fine actor. He won a Tony Award in 1988 for his performance in the David Mammoth play, Speed the Plow. He played a hard-bitten political consultant on this TV show, The West Wing, and just so many, so many other great performances. And as you will see in the video, he's a very, very versatile actor. He played many different roles. Uh, this self-proclaimed lifelong liberal would be astonished at the uh, venting, the, the, uh, the venom that, uh, that was uh, heated upon him by his so-called liberal pals who blackballed him in Hollywood because he saw a city that he loved, New York City, was being turned, ter torn apart, and like myself, back Rudy Giuliani for mayor. Ron and I were very, very proud to sit on the platform at City Hall, and on April 9-11, and, and, and after 9-11, we were even more proud. Ron received more uh, grief from Hollywood, uh, the Hollywood liberals, when he spoke at the 2004 Republic Convention. <laughs> and as a private citizen, his major global concern was Islamic terrorism. I had the honor to work with Ron on a project, a pilot called The Good Policeman. And believe me, he was a very good policeman. Ron was always reading and learning. He never, he never spoke without uh, long deliberation on both sides of the argument. He was learning. He was learning languages. He spoke many languages. He spoke Chinese, Spanish, I can't believe I'm doing this without my glasses. He prayed in Hebrew. He got, he, he, he got by in French, a little German, Italian, and Yiddish. This was a man. This was a true learner, a person who had a thirst for knowledge. Uh, he was president of the Actors' Equity Association from 1991 to 2000. That's three terms. And he helped Mayor Giuliani to bring back New York and promote films to be shot in New York City, bringing, bringing in a windfall for New York and to the city. And he was very instrumental for turning 42nd Street from a drug street to a theatrical venue and Broadway bonanza. Ron approached citizens he approached Citizens United Foundation's president, David Bossy, when he learned Mr. Bossy was planning a documentary, Broken Promises, a film focusing on how badly the United Nations was living up to expectations. Ron, after speaking with David, wound up narrating the film and was the co-executive producer of the film. Um, now, his brother, as in many of our families, uh, don't necessarily agree with our politics, the way we see things. His brother, Mitchell Silva, said that Ron's politics were not shared by anyone he knew. <laughs> his politics, Ron's politics, in other words, were born of conviction, not of convenience, which is one way to describe an honest patriot now, now I would like, honest patriot. Now I would like to uh, invite you to a tribute to Ron's film, directed by Mr. Bossy. Please watch the screens.
The first time I really noticed him in, in that regard, he did an extended piece on something called, on a series called Wise Guys. It was something in the eyes. There was something about Ron's eyes that made you aware that he was seeing more. Look, Marv Bubbler, you don't have to boy trick me. I'm gonna remember Mr. Dershowitz, because <laughs> he was stunning. The family hired a private prosecutor. Unacceptable. I take cases because I get pissed off. I'll never forget when he was playing the United States Senator and Time Cop. You know, don't expect to be my chief of staff if my slamming your face into the side of the car is going to turn you into a sniveling moron. I know that he wanted to do that to, a, to liberals every day. He just couldn't. Interestingly enough, for a man who made his career in acting, Ron wanted to be identified with the Institute uh, by being remembered in our library. Bruno. Yeah, uh, listen up, I, I've been thinking, it might not be such a bad idea for me to lock you all in here and set the place on fire. We will work well, and we will work together. Or so help me, mother of God, I will stick a pitchfork so far up your asses you will quite simply be dead. You know, a lot of actor, great actors who aren't great men. And a lot of great men who obviously aren't great actors. He's one of the few you could say it's true of both. I do the best I can. It's not so easy. He loved life. He loved defending America and defending freedom, uh, defending the First Amendment. Bush chose not to be surprised by the inevitable. Bush chose to stop him 1937, not wait till 1945, because 1945 today is going to be much worse, because it's going to be a nuclear weapon in a major city with millions of people. And I'm not trusting myself or my children's safety or our nation's safety in the hands of Michael Moore's perspective on how to protect us. We will never forget, we will never forgive, we will never excuse. And for him to step out there and say the things he said in a uh, sort of a industry town like Hollywood where it's lockstep, he was a, he was a uh, mensch. It's getting less difficult to be a conservative in Hollywood. There are more of them speaking up. And I think Ron Silver uh, paved the way. He was a man of convictions that mattered and an example that mattered more. A man with whom you could disagree but never find disagreeable. That's not a bad commentary on a life well spent for me just a life too damn short. We miss you, Ron, very much. Ron Silver was a patriot, first and foremost. He loved his country with a ferocity. Ron could disagree on an issue, but have some laughs at the same time. That is rare, and it made him a very special person. I always admired Ron's independent streak, the fact that he was a thinker, not a follower. He'll be remembered for his talent and for his dignity. There's no question about that. I saw him with his boy years ago. He was sick at this point. I told him how courageous I thought he was. This is my one, my biggest time with him, and I'll, I'll never forget that look on that boy's face. Uh, that uh, how proud he was of it. Now, how are you going to trade that for uh, what, what, Rob Reiner's approbation? I mean, your boy looks at you, and he knows you went to the mat for what you believed in. He's made that Atticus Finch dent on his progeny. What else matters on the planet Earth? So study this man and study his life, and in it you will find much to improve your own. I'd like to talk to you just for a few moments in a little more serious vein. We do not choose to be born. We do not choose our parents or our times or country of birth or the circumstances of our upbringing. We do not, most of us, choose to die or the time or conditions of our death. But within all this realm of choicelessness, we do choose how we shall live, courageously or in cowardice, honorably or dishonorably, with purpose or adrift. We decide what's important and what is trivial and what makes us significant is what we do or refuse to do. We decide and we choose 
And so we give definition to our lives. Thanks. But I am done. I'm going home. Bought a big house on the Hudson there that I never get to see. I was thinking about planting some flowers. Put her around the garden a little. Flowers. He was a great actor, and as Ron said, we must never forget. We must carry on, carry on his legacy, everything he believed in. I can only thank you, and thank you, May and Irving Silver. Ron's parents are here with us, please. If I could ask, Tony, thank you, stand by here. If I could ask Ron uh, Silver's sister, excuse me, daughter, Alexandra, to come up to the stage for a moment. We have a small presentation we'd like to make um, to um, induct Ron posthumously into a distinct company that we have called the, that of the Ron Silver Star. And you see it here on the lapel of Tony LeBianco. David Bossi, will you come up and join us as well? He's also wearing this distinction. You may have seen it on Lionel Chetwin in the film. Others who have received it are John Voigt, Gary Sinise, Kelsey Grammer, Lionel Chetwin, I mentioned, Roger Simon, Andrew Breitbart, Evan Sayet. And now, Ron Silver. My dad would have loved that line about sister, by the way. Yeah, sorry like, no, 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 he would have loved that. That's perfect. <laughs> That's perfect. Um, I'm not going to speak long. I just want to say thank you to everyone here. This is an incredible experience. I know for myself, I think I can say for my grandparents, it's quite an honor. And thank you, particularly Frank, Tony, Amanda. This has been amazing. Um, still recovering from seeing the film. Excuse me, but I just want to say I am so proud of my father. And, um, you know, we argued a lot, <laughs> sometimes about politics. It doesn't matter. I am so proud of him. And again, thank you, everyone. Thank you.